In this video, we're going to take a look at the only OSINT challenge in the Integrity Elite Up Live CTF. Well, if you don't include the Zchat one anyway. And it's from the real Brenu. The description says, can you help us track down this photographer? All right, so we'll start by opening up the link, photographs.ctf.integrity.io. And there's not much to look at here. Maybe you'll check the source code of the website, but actually we're interested in this image. So I'm going to save this to the desktop and then we can go and do some standard checks on this. So maybe we'll have a look at the strings that are in it. You can do like strings dash n10 if you want to just get strings in a certain length. And actually we immediately see something which looks interesting because it's in leet speak. But where's that coming from? Well, actually we should have probably checked the XF data of the image. So let's do that uh, pictures.jpg. And if we have a look at the XIF data, somewhere we're going to see the artist, which was Flop Flop. So we can go and start Googling for this name online. We might also do a reverse image search on this image. So you can take it to tineye.com or use the Google image reverse search to try and track this down. But now that we've got a username, let's also try Sherlock, which is a tool to look up usernames. And I get this error because I'm running Para OS, which seems to be really slow to update tools and software and packages and stuff. I'm probably going to go back to Kali whenever I decide to make a new VM. But for now, let's just clone this repo so that we've got the latest version. We can have a look at the install instructions on the Git repo, or we can just go and see what we've got in here. We have a requirements.txt, so let's do pip install requirements. And let's try this again. So we can do Python, Sherlock, Sherlock, and then the username. In fact, I don't have that copied anymore. So let me just do this. We'll do Python, Sherlock, Sherlock. And this time it should actually find what websites this username is on. Get quite a lot of accounts that come back that we can take a look at. GitHub sounds particularly interesting to me. So let's open that up first. And we might want to see, first of all, we've got this Twitter link. So we could go there and have a look and see what tweets there are. We can have a look at the repos and see, are there any hints in here? Maybe there's some old commits which have been left there that we can look at. So there's only one commit in this one, so I guess not. Maybe there would be something in a commit message or in a release if you see a release as well. But there's not actually anything of interest here. I'm not logged into Twitter, but if you check the Twitter account, there's also nothing there either. And this is where a lot of people got stuck. You could start having a look through some of the other accounts that you see here, or you can go and have a look on Google or your search engine of choice to try and find anything else about this user. And I think now because the CTF's over, we'll probably quickly find some write-ups if we start looking through these, but have a look through each of these websites and see are any of them relevant. And in fact, probably what the best thing to do here is if you look back at the Git repo, it was created, I think the account was actually created in September. So you could go and have a look at the user and I'm just trying to see their commit history. Let's go back. Here we go. So you can see that the first commit was on September the 8th. So maybe we would change the search settings here and say anytime, let's do custom range. And we'll do it from the 9th and it was the 8th. Let's just do the 1st of September and we'll do it to, we don't want to do it to the current date. Let's do it to before the CTF. So we'll do it to Friday. And this will return two Reddit links. One is the flop flops user that we're looking for. Another is this margarine user. I'm not too sure why the descriptions show up as all this real housewife stuff, but um, yeah, we can go and have a look at these users. We can see that there are some messages saying nice shot. So there is some photography related stuff here. And maybe we'll have a look through their comment history and their previous posts and see if there's anything. But there isn't. So let's see why this other user came up. And we'll see that actually they created a, they added a comment to a post about a GitHub profile generator two months ago. And they actually referenced the flop flops GitHub profile. So it looks like this other user is another username also used by the same person. I guess this is their alt account or their non-professional account. And that gives us a new username that we'll want to investigate. 
So let's do the same thing again. Let's go back and do our Sherlock command. And this time we'll do the new username. All right, so that returns plenty of links again. We need to go through and have a look at each one of these. And in doing so, we'll eventually come to their Twitter account. Maybe this is one of the first things you would check anyway. And we can see the account joined in September, and that's as far as we get before we need to log in. So bear with me one second. Okay, done. So we have logged in, and now we can see the profile. It's actually got another image, so maybe we'll download this image and see. I'm not too sure if there would be EXIF data in this. I'm assuming Twitter probably will delete that whenever you upload an image, but maybe we could check the EXIF data. We can also do the reverse image search, which we were talking about earlier. So let's go to Google or to TinEye, depending on what you prefer. And then let's open this up. Something went wrong. OK, let's try that again. Find image source. That does not look like the correct image. Oh, it looks fine here. OK, let's. Uh, all right, I'm going to do TinEye. Maybe it's just an issue with Google. We'll open up the image and we get zero results. So I guess we do need to use Google. All right, let's try it again. So maybe rather than uploading a file, let's try and paste in the link of that image. Although I doubt that's going to work because it probably needs to log in to access it. But let's give it a go. Paste this in here. All right, that worked. There we go. So we can go and have a look again through these images and try and work out which one is the right one. And we'll see that we've got one here from Vicky Vale, which was posted two months ago. Again, interesting. This is on Reddit. So we have another user that we can look into. All right. So again, let us go to Sherlock and we can paste this in and find out what platforms they have an account on. In the meantime, let's go and search this in Google as well. And the first link that comes up is vickypictures.blogspot.com as well as the Reddit link. So that's something potentially interesting. We've also got a video here as well. It's not quite matching the name. All right, we go there. We've got that same image and then we've got some comments here as well. The first comment says, I don't think it's a good idea to share your location online, but I don't see them mentioning any location. Well, maybe we need to see if this page was edited. So they're mentioning location. I don't see any location here. Let's go to the Wayback Machine and see if this website was indexed at any point, if there was a copy of it saved. And we'll see that there were three snapshots taken between the 2nd of October and the 21st of November. We'll go back to the 2nd of October click on the timestamp and this will retrieve the archived page, which as we'll see has our flag in it. We can go back and have a look at our Sherlock command. It didn't actually bring back that blogspot page. So even if we went through each one of these links, it wouldn't have led us to the flag. We still need to use a search engine to find that. And that is how we solve the OSINT challenge by the real Brenu. I thought it was pretty cool. There was multiple steps in it, multiple accounts that we had to trace through to try and find the original location of the photo. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.